So, it's been a great day, um, and the question's come up a couple times from James 4. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? And here's what James says. Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? A few years ago, uh, my family and I uh, went to Alaska. There we are. Can you throw that up there? All right. This was a few years ago when we were all younger. I still had very little hair then as well. Um, it's my wife there in the back. That's my daughter Carly on the left. That's my daughter Abby down below. And it was a great trip. You know, people say you got to go to Alaska. Absolutely. Go to Alaska. Not now, but go to Alaska at some point. I did a wedding for someone, and the mother of the bride happened to be uh, a flight attendant for Alaska Airlines. So as, um, as a gift to me for doing the wedding for her daughter, uh, she sent my family to Alaska. And we did it. We did everything. We went and saw the feeding ground of the gray whales. We kayaked down the river, saw bears on the shore. And we went out on the uh, Glacier Bay cruise and saw the glacier. So I took this picture. And you know, right after I took it, I noticed something funny kind of off Carly's uh, right ear. This kind of hole in the glacier that was pouring out this stuff. Um, here's a closer look at it. Uh, and I asked the guide on the boat, I said, what is that? And he said, well, it's called a portal. And I said, well, tell me about this, this portal. And he says, what happens is, you know, when a glacier starts to melt, the, the water kind of goes down inside it. And even though it looks really kind of, um, you know, uh, firm and, and together, it, it's in fact starting to kind of melt from the inside. And the, the water mixes with some of the sediment and gravel that it's dragged along the way in its path. And the pressure builds inside this glacier. And at some point, it just blows a hole, or what's called a portal, in the side. And I remember looking at that and feeling like, you know, there's something profound here. And I kind of recognized in it a kind of metaphor for my heart, for the human heart. And, and, and in particular, for where conflict begins in my life. It became an illustration for kind of how I leak on people. Now, I don't think most of us, when we get up in the morning, set out to sin, right? We, we get up and we, we want to live well. We want to enjoy the blessings of obedience to God. We want to experience life. So most of us don't get up in the morning with a little to-do list that says, okay, you know what? I think I'll get an argument with my mom and hang up on her. That's the first thing I'll do. And then I think I'll go egg roll my roommate after that. It'll be some time then for some gossip. Uh, I'll suggest my roommate lose some weight. Uh, I think I'll, then I'll yell at the guy in the blue suburban who always parks in our space. I'll cheat on my test, and then I'll hang up on my dad. No, I, most of us don't live life that way. We don't, you and I don't intend to sin. You know what we do? Is we leak it. You and I just kind of leak sin. We, we don't mean to, but at some point, something happens in our day, it kind of pokes us, and the portal opens up, and we leak on people. You know, we are kind of like these icebergs that you've seen in these pictures. And kind of the upper part of the iceberg is kind of our externalized life, our words and our actions. But you know, below the surface is our heart, is my heart. And thank goodness that the Holy Spirit, if we're believers, thank goodness the Holy Spirit is there in us. We are truly new creatures. As Paul says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come, and the new has come. But you and I are not completely transformed. There is still some stuff lingering in our hearts, in my heart. There is still fears that we've carried with us our whole lives. Uh, there's envy. 
Uh, some speakers today have talked about some of the wounds in their lives that for so many years kind of festered there and leaked out in all directions. There's anger, there's insecurities, there's errata, which, by which I mean just wrong beliefs that we hold in our heart but that drive our lives. There's painful memories. This is why Paul prays to the Ephesians who are already believers. This is what he prays for the, for the people who are already believers. He says, I pray that you would come to know the height and length and breadth and depth of the love of Christ and be filled up with this love. So it's true we have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit has continued to take ground in my life. So when you and I pray, thy kingdom come, we're not only praying this for the world, but we're praying this for ourselves because there is more territory in my heart. And I know this because you know, it just takes a little trigger in my life, a little, a little poke in my glacier, and out comes the stuff that's been in my heart. You know, I, I know this firsthand. Um, I, I had a wonderful childhood. I know we've heard some very painful stories today, and thank God that is not my story. But I had, I had great parents, I had great siblings, um, but you know, I still had some real needs. I, I was a late child. Uh, I was born when my mom was uh, about 39. My dad was 40. They, they assured me I wasn't an accident. Uh, they didn't name me Mac for middle age carelessness. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so what that means though is my brothers and sisters were a lot older than I was. My twin sisters were 12 years older than I was, and my brother was 14 years older when I was born. Um, and so, you know, uh, I was pretty young. Here I was when I was, uh, there I am when I was five, four years old. Yeah, look at those ears. <laughs> yeah, a big wind came up, I was airborne. Uh, I was like, <laughs> over there in Downey. Mrs. Pike's class, 1965. You know, but this was also the same year that my brother left for college. And you know, there's no blame here. I mean, he was just living his life. But you know, I was told that every morning when I woke up, I would go sit in front of his door and wait for him to wake up. <laughs> Give me a minute. No, I'm kidding. Now, I mean, clearly, I don't actually remember that, but I was told that by my, my, my parents, that I would wait for Mike to wake up because I was so attached to my siblings, and the same with my twin sisters. So when I was five, Mike left for college, and then a year later, my two other sisters were gone, and they really never moved home again. They would visit, you know, weekends, you know, a week or two in the summer. But I kind of lost, you know, all my siblings in a year and a half. Um... And you know, I think what happened to me was I felt like I was never enough to hold them. Now, that wasn't true, of course. They were just living their lives. They were moving out. But I think maybe I felt like, well, I wasn't interesting enough. I mean, here I am five, you know. So it was a, it was a feeling. Uh, but that, that, that I wasn't grown up enough, and gosh, I wanted to be grown up. I mean, our house was filled with teenagers all the time. It was so fun, so exciting. I was so young, but I wanted to be like them. I wanted to be in with the teenagers. I wanted to be grown up. I wanted to be noticed. And then suddenly they were all gone. And you know, so what happened to me is I kind of grew up as, as someone with this big kind of need to be noticed, to be taken seriously, to grow up. I had this kind of insecurity in me that unless I kind of held people's attention, unless I, unless I was really interesting or really funny, or really insightful, that I wouldn't be able to hold people. I mean, one insightful person even suggested that maybe I went off and became a college professor because I was still chasing my siblings off to college. Maybe, maybe. But I've noticed in my life, even into college when I was choosing majors, there's me in college, um, even then I was struggling to find something that would... <laughs> Is there some kind of delay? Is there some kind of like a delay? So like a three second visual delay, is that what's happening here? <laughs> yeah, this is the point where you say, oh my gosh, that totally doesn't look like you. <laughs> and this is where I feel bad, um, and old. Uh, 
Yeah, so even in college, I was, looking, I was looking for that thing that would set me apart from everyone. I was looking for that identity because I thought if I could just find that, well then, maybe people would pay attention to me. If I, I would be taken seriously. And so, you know, many of the conflicts in my life have started in my heart. Where I've wanted more attention than other people, more notoriety, where I've craved the achievements of others, craved the applause of others. It's been that little thing that has popped out on the portal and just, and just caused kind of chaos in my relationships and hurt. And you know, it was sometime later that I noticed that maybe I had a sister in the Luke 10 story of Mary and Martha. And you know the story, right? The, Jesus is traveling with his disciples. He enters a village and there's a woman named Martha who welcomes him into her home and she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to his word. But Martha, we're told, was distracted with all her preparations. And she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. But only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her. See, in this, in this, little, this little account, Martha is, is clearly the one who's busy. She's the hostess. Um, we're told two verses later she's busy with the preparations, which we, we imagine was some type of preparation of a meal, although it doesn't say that. In fact, what, what her preparations are called are diakonia, which is the word we get for deacon. Somebody who's performing a service, somebody who's doing a ministry. So there's a sense in which Martha is doing a very good thing. She is, she is serving others. Mary, we're told, is just sitting at Jesus' feet. But you know, there's something a little off about Martha. She's a little bit distracted. And so when she comes to complain to Jesus, Jesus uses the double vocative, the, 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 he says her name twice, which usually signals a kind of compassion. Mixed with a little bit of sorrow here. Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. The word bothered is a Greek word, thori bodzo, which is a word that means a kind of restlessness, a kind of disturbance in one's soul in this case. It's also used for communities who are in conflict. A thori bodzo would be a, a disruption in a community, but here this disruption is in Martha's heart. He looks at you, he looks at Martha and says, Martha, there is a war in your heart. Interestingly, Martha does not ask to trade places with her sister. She might have been a little like me. She wanted to be loved and accepted based on some kind of impact she could make, some kind of, of, of um, a vocation that would bring her the love from others, instead maybe of going right to Jesus for that love. She wanted to make a name for herself maybe in her skill, in what she could do. What causes quarrels and what causes fights in me? Is it not this, that my passions are waging war within me? Passion has become kind of a positive word in our culture, but I think in me I had to watch that feeling of passion, what I was passionate about. Because my passion to be gifted or to achieve or to contribute was energized in part by a deep need to be noticed and approved of, and I was gonna do it on my own. And woe to the person who got in my way, who bumped into me, because the portal would open and out would come my stuff. Well, what have I learned about dealing with this? Well, first of all, I've learned to watch over my heart. And of course, this comes right from Proverbs. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. You know, I like this because basically it's saying, you know, your heart, your life is just gonna flow from your heart. I mean, for good or for ill, what is in our hearts, our life is just gonna flow from it. And so you and I should know what's in there. And so I've learned in the last several years to kind of watch over my heart to see if there's a restlessness, to see if there's a a war happening within me, to see if there's unrest, because I don't want it to leak out on other people. I don't want to pop a portal. So I want to watch over my heart. And if there is stuff there that's, 
that is, is full of unrest or anger, envy, jealousy, you know the one person that's safe to leak on? is Jesus. Psalm 62, eight. Trust in the Lord at all times, O people. Pour out that portal. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. See, that's the one thing that Martha did right. She went to Jesus. She didn't know what she was doing, but that's the right thing to do. Lord, I feel worthless. I'm full of envy, I'm full of jealousy, I'm full of disappointment. Well, this is where we pour it out, why? Because Jesus wants to offer us peace. Jesus wants to take, take Todd and he say, Todd, I want you to experience my peace, my nurture, my love. I wanna take over more and more territory of your heart. And this is a great command, let the peace of Christ dwell within you, because it's not something that's a command just for you to do. It's not like, be at peace, or peace out. That would be easy in some way. Well, just give me something to do. But no, this is one of those weird commands, let something be done to you. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. And this is gonna happen primarily through prayer, through honest prayer, as we take the stuff that's deep in our glacier, as we pour it out to God, as we ask for God, Jesus for his healing, for his nurture, well, this is a process. Saint Seraphim of Sarov, a famous Russian saint, said, cultivate a spirit of peace and thousands will come to Christ. It is such a rare commodity in our world. Wow, what if that were true? Well, that has become my calling, to cultivate a spirit of peace so that I don't leak out conflict on others, but I leak out the peace of Christ. So watch over your heart with all diligence. Insofar as it depends with you, be at peace with all people, with only the peace Christ can give. Thank you for listening. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.